What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Business Talks podcast. If you're new here, my name is Bailey Canning. I am the CEO of Inbound Web Development. We are a growth marketing agency based in Boulder, Colorado, working with clients nationwide to help them design and develop custom, high-end, marketing-focused websites, and then working with them afterwards on a growth marketing campaign to help them drive traffic, generate leads, and ultimately grow their revenues. And the Business Talks podcast is all about providing you, whether you're an entrepreneur or an in-house marketing professional, with the latest sales, marketing, and lead gen advice from myself in a uh, more going forward capacity, but also just industry experts across the channels that I just mentioned. On today's podcast, I want to piggyback off the two most recent podcasts that have come out, one being with Adam Mormon and the other being with Andy Genitis. Both are PPC marketing professionals. Um, PPC just meaning pay per click, which essentially in today's digital advertising landscape means Google ads. Um, they're basically interchangeable terms. So there was a lot of value provided by both of those guests, mostly around how you can use Google ads to grow your business. But I wanted to do a deep dive episode, which I'll be doing more of, like I mentioned a uh, couple episodes ago, trying to really distill down what the value is in about 10 to 15 minutes, hopefully, give or take. Before we get into that, if you like the podcast um, and you want to keep listening to this, definitely subscribe, whether you're on Google, Apple, or Spotify, or if you like the video version of this, if you're like a YouTube fan, which sometimes I can be, um, all these come out on my YouTube channel as well. It's just Bailey Canning, and you can find links to all those profiles I just mentioned um, in the show notes of this episode. But all right, getting into the meat and potatoes of today's discussion, or today's monologue, if you will. So basically, we're going to go over a brief overview of the value that Google Ads provides local service businesses. And I do believe in my professional marketing opinion that essentially all local service businesses, that is any business that provides a service in a geographically defined local area, so not selling products, not in like the retail space, should be running Google Ads. And by the end of this discussion, you're going to see exactly why I believe so strongly in that. Getting right to the point, Google Ads are the most effective way for service-based businesses that operate in a clearly defined location, like I just said, to be able to quickly generate leads literally overnight. They are perfect for any service-based business because they allow your company to be seen on the top of Google search results whenever a prospective client searches for terms related to your company and the services it provides within that local service area. Best of all, getting a Google Ads campaign up and running is very fast, very easy. It doesn't require a long, drawn-out uh, planning phase like you would see from other marketing um, channels such as like SEO or even like a Facebook ads campaign. You can literally get one of these ad campaigns up and running in like, you know, one to two hours if you're experienced or you hire an agency that knows what they're doing. Yeah. So let's just get into it. If you are interested in this topic and want to learn a little bit more, like I said, definitely check out the past two episodes I've done on this topic with Adam Mormon. That is a very deep dive into everything about Google ads. The one I did with Andy Genitis is heavily focused on Google ads, but we also talk about some other things such as um, email marketing and really how Google ads can fit into a broader online marketing strategy. So yeah, but those two episodes really are just like a crash course. So if you have like, you know, 60 to 70 minutes, because each one's about a half hour, give or take, you are going to really come away learning quite a bit. So the Google ads represent tremendous value for service-based businesses, as I've been alluding to this entire time. Um, by this, I simply mean that any company that provides a professional service, so this could be accountants, lawyers, physical therapists, architecture firms, construction companies, financial advisors, I think you get the picture. And so by running Google ads, you can essentially bypass the hard work it would take to rank for the same search result terms at the top of Google through organic SEO, which could take anywhere between six to 12 months. Ultimately with Google ads, you can essentially just pay to get to the top spot. Think of it. If you've ever been to Disney world, for example, like the fast pass where you can just pay to cut the line. That's basically what we're talking about here because everything else is the same because the headline is the same, like the same headline you would see on Google search um, on the organic listings is the same as the Google ad you'll eventually be creating. If you do pursue the strategy, the result description is the same. And that's basically, so it's basically the same thing, although it does have a little ad that does appear next to it. Now, fun fact, there was a recent study done that said something about anywhere between 60 to 70% of regular consumers on the internet don't even know that there's a difference between 
the Google ads and the Google organic search results. So if you were worried that, you know, you, you understand the value, but you're like, well, they're going to see that it's a paid placement. So how, you know, doesn't that offer some skepticism immediately? Honestly, the majority of cases based on that study, no, it does not because people don't even know that there is a difference in fact. Um, so yeah, but however, just because your, your company can run Google ads and I believe should be, that doesn't mean that it should not invest in organic SEO because, you know, based on me and Adam got into this in our conversation recently, but uh, each channel is just one particular part of a broader search marketing strategy. So basically think of if you're a local service business, you want to be appearing on Google search results whenever people are searching for, you know, terms and, ser and other keywords related to your business and um, the services it offers. But think of it in two different buckets then, and you basically want to devise a strategy across Google ads and across organic SEO to accomplish that objective. And this is important because literally whenever someone is interested in a service company like yours, we both know, the two of us, that they're going to go to Google to find a company unless they have a recommendation from a friend who's like, um, you know, you need like a suit tailored. Here, I've got an awesome tailor for you right in town. Go here. That's basically the only time they're not going to go to Google. So if they don't already have someone in mind who can help them, they're going to be going to Google. And that's why it's very important for your company to be ranking well on the search engine results pages. And worth noting, which you probably already know, but I just want to really reiterate because it is extremely important. If your company isn't on the first page of Google, it essentially doesn't exist in today's digital world because no one goes past the first page of Google when they're searching for something. So in the world of search engine results um, and in the world of SEO and search marketing, if you're not first, you're last pretty much. So Google Ads lets you pay to be top of mind immediately when someone searches for terms related to your company. So it can always be top of mind and in the conversation. Another benefit of Google Ads, especially for local businesses on a limited budget or just starting to think about paid advertising and don't want to go all in just yet, is that they run on a pay per click PPC model. So basically, your company only gets charged when someone clicks on an ad and has an interested prospect on its website. So basically, you're only paying when someone actually gets onto your website. Now, you contrast this with something like Facebook ads, for example, where you're going to be charged just for the ad running and people seeing it. So, you know, especially these days in Facebook, you don't have a lot of visibility into actually who is seeing that ad. Depends on your targeting a lot. But for example, you could be running ads to people who are totally unqualified for your service and are just not a good fit for whatever reason, and you could still get charged with that. However, with Google ads, you can be relatively sure that it's a good investment um, you know, given that you have the proper uh, safeguards in place, which I would definitely talk to or listen to my conversation with Adam to learn more about those. But basically, you can be pretty confident because no one's going to be searching for terms related to your business and um, not going to be clicking on those ads if they weren't, one, already in the geographic area and two, actually interested in learning more based on whatever your ad sort of previewed. Um, so yeah, and then finally, last but not least, is that Google, also the Google ads make it extremely easy to track how many leads your campaigns generate. And I'm going to talk about in a second what campaigns specifically to be running to generate leads for your business. But yeah, basically setting up conversion tracking is super, super simple with Google ads. As long as you're working with like a freelancer or marketing agency or in-house marketing professional that knows what they're doing. Very simple to track conversions, which is really, really critical, especially if you're a service-based business, because you're going to want to eventually figure it out and gather the data necessary to see how many leads it takes to sign a client. And based on the average value of a new client, you can then work backwards to determine the ROI of your advertising dollars. So in a world where lots of key online mar marketing activities are getting more difficult to track, this isn't the case, at least so far, with Google Ads. Now, let's talk about the types of campaigns that service-based businesses should be looking to set up if they are interested in a search or a pay-per-click online advertising strategy. So what campaigns you set up for your business is actually pretty straightforward. And at a high level, the way you can think about this is you just want to focus on where your prospects are in terms of the buyer's journey, and then you can have campaigns structured around those segments. So when it comes to Google ads, we're primarily talking about the top of funnel and bottom of the funnel of the buyer's journey. So if you don't know what that is, don't worry, I'm about to explain it in two quick seconds here. But people at the top of the funnel, you can think of those people as research mode, right? They are researching something related to whatever it is they're trying to solve in their lives. So these people have just become aware of the need for a company such as yours that offers services that can help them. 
For example, if someone is suffering from chronic back pain, it's not going away. They know they need to hire a medical professional to eventually resolve it. So, and they don't have a recommendation from anyone in their personal or professional network. They know of no chiropractors in the local area. So they're going to go to Google and they're going to start Googling around for that. This also includes people who do not necessarily need to hire someone. So, you know, in that case, unless they want to be dealing with like chronic back pain the rest of their lives, they are going to need to hire. So it's a bit more of a necessity. What I'm referring to is basically anyone who is looking to take action in something in their lives. For example, if someone is tired of having a very outdated interior design of their home and they want to change it, then searching for an interior designer to help them renovate the inside of their home would be something that they're going to likely be pursuing. So whatever the reasons are, these types of prospective clients are looking for information to aid in their purchasing decision. They're interested in a particular service, but not ready to reach out for consultations and hire a company until they have more information. So here, what I would recommend that you do is develop a lead magnet. And, you know, I give the same advice to all my clients as well. And this is essentially a gated piece of valuable content that people can only access by giving their name and email address. Usually there could be other pieces of information like a phone number, but generally in the industry, it's those two pieces of information. And so once you begin to generate signups via Google ads on your lead magnet, this then gives your company the ability to provide upfront value immediately and establish that no like and trust factor. And then also because you have their email address, you can follow up with them with a smart email marketing campaign to build an authentic relationship with them and continue to provide value in the inbox. And then based on, you know, maybe they're not ready to make a decision right now, but two to three weeks down the line, they are, if you've been following up with them that entire time, staying top of mind in the inbox, providing value, you know, and think about their competitors who probably weren't doing these things when it comes time for them to make a decision, who do you think they're going to go with? If you want to learn more about how email marketing can be used to maximize the ROI of your entire marketing strategy, then definitely check out last week's conversation with Andy Janitis because we spent a lot of time talking about email marketing and why it's becoming even more important in today's marketing world where it's getting very hard to track some of these key online marketing metrics that we've been so used to in the industry for so long. Now going on to bottom of the funnel campaign. So bottom of the funnel campaigns are very straightforward. People in this stage of the buyer's journey are ready to make a hiring decision and all they need to do is find the right company for them. So these people are either ready to hire someone right now or in the very near future and are just looking to set up some consultations and get in contact with a few businesses so that they can get some information and move ahead with whatever they're trying to do. Either way, creating ads targeting these search terms is very simple. All you need to do is write ads that target bottom of the funnel search terms. So you really don't need to get very creative. It's really pretty straightforward in terms of developing these types of ads. So for example, let's say you work for an architecture firm and are setting up a Google ads campaign as part of your architecture firm's digital marketing strategy. This would mean creating ads around such as, you know, architecture firm near me. It's a very common search. Um, of course, when I give this example, you could apply this to any business. So if you're an electrician, you could say electrician company near me, etc. You might want to explore specific services that your business offers. So if you're an architecture firm that specializes in maybe traditional architecture, you could say traditional architecture firm near me. You would also want to include examples of the location in which it operates in. So say, for example, this architecture firm is located in Nashville, Tennessee. You'd want to say traditional architecture firm Nashville or Nashville, Tennessee. You would want to be targeting those terms. You'd also want to make sure that your ads are also only running in the geographic areas that you service as well. And then you could also just continue to go on the line of, you know, targeting architectural design services, um, licensed architect, et cetera, et cetera. I think it's pretty straightforward, uh, but of course you do need to tailor this a bit to your business. From there, you want to drive people to a landing page on your website. So this is basically a page specifically developed for this campaign in mind. I would not recommend just driving traffic to a homepage because generally it's too broad. You want to have a service page talking about the service that you're promoting. And this way you can give people concrete overview of your business, key service features, and your experience and your past work. So portfolio pieces, for example, if you're an architecture firm and the process to get started. So what it's going to look like once they contact you and what they can expect during like that pre-sales process, frequently asked questions, related blog or video content. And then finally a form at the bottom of that page so that people can get in touch with your business right away. 
So yeah, it's pretty much all I really wanted to cover today. Um, we're just a little over 15 minutes, so hopefully it's been fairly succinct, succinct, excuse me, and hopefully you've gotten a fair amount of value out of this. But really, at the end of the day, summarizing, Google Ads is one of the most effective, proven online marketing strategies. They've literally been around since um, the mid-2000s, so nearly just about 15 years now, give or take, and they are not going to be going around anytime soon. They're backed by one of the largest companies in the world. And um, yeah, I mean, it's just simple marketing at the end of the day. You know, you got to be where your customers are and that's where they are at the end of the day if they're going to be searching for local service companies in their area to hire. So any service-based business with the budget to afford running these campaigns should be investing in Google Ads, in my opinion, so they can be consistently found whenever prospects online in their local area are searching for terms related to their company and the services that it offers. This is especially important because these, you know, if you're a service provider, you're having, you know, consultations. And as you know, as a service provider, that consultation doesn't always result in a sale. However, if you're able to get a marketing strategy like this, that is able to consistently generate, you know, signed or um, scheduled consultations, excuse me, you know, if you keep getting up to the plate and you keep getting at bats, you know, you're going to start hitting some doubles, some triples, and even some home runs in these cases. So, the more opportunity you give yourself, the better off your business is going to be for the long run. And like I said, you can get these campaigns literally up and running, you know, in like a day, basically. And you could be off to the races with this, which is really not true for a lot of the other marketing strategies. So, yeah, that's that's the podcast for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got some value out of it. If you enjoyed it and you want to learn more about these topics that I talked about, definitely go back and listen to the last two podcasts, which have been heavily around this Google Ads topic, because it really is just an absolutely critical marketing strategy that I do strongly believe that every local service business should be running these. And in fact, I'm running them myself. So I do not just say this theoretically. I actually practice what I preach, which I think we all should be doing in the marketing industry. All right. That's the podcast. Hope you liked it. If you want to learn more, then you can definitely go to my website, inboundwithdevelopment.com. We've got a ton of great content on there. And um, if you're interested in getting in touch and setting up a consultation, you can certainly do that. There's a little outro at the end here that I'll give you some more information on what you can expect there. But hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got some value out of it. And um, yeah, definitely make sure to subscribe on all the podcast platforms or check it out on YouTube. And if you enjoyed it as well, you think any of your friends or colleagues would, certainly tell them about the podcast because yeah, it just helps the show. All right, I've gone on long enough here. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And uh, see you in the next one. Take care. Bye. Hey there. Thank you for taking the time to tune into the Business Talks podcast. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed the show, then definitely subscribe to either our YouTube channel or your favorite podcast platform to get notified each week when new episodes are released every Thursday. And if you're feeling extra generous, then you can also leave a review on either Apple Podcasts or Spotify to help more people discover the show. Links are in the show notes to make this super easy for you. Now, if you own a business or work in-house as a marketing professional for a service-based company, then definitely check out our website, inboundwebdevelopment.com. There, you will discover how we're helping our clients build incredible websites and high-performing growth marketing campaigns that are driving consistent traffic, generating leads, and ultimately growing revenues. If you like what you see and think we would be a good fit to work together, then feel free to connect with me by booking a strategy call. During this friendly conversation, I'll get to learn more about what challenges your company is currently facing and help you outline a marketing game plan to overcome them. A link is in the show notes that will allow you to easily select a day and time that works for you. Until next time, take care.